You're not old enough to remember this, Suzanne, but I am. There, there, most of my adult life, this would have been simply considered a figment of someone's imagination. There was nothing in the world stronger than the U.S. dollar. Yeah, but we'll, ha we'll have to see how uh, the viewers, uh, what they think of it. You know, uh, Jack, joining me, I got a special guest here. I don't know if you know who this is. Uh, you got two Malvos as opposed to one today. What do you think? Really? Is this a relative? This is my twin sister, as a matter of fact, Jack. Well, let's get a close-up of her so I can see. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> there's no, oh, there's yes, your close-up, Look in there. You got double trouble on your hands today. Right. I, I hope so you, much, I hope so you can much handle beauty it. In a, so much beauty in a single family. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Huh? Jack, Jack's a charmer. Jack has been so nice this week. He's just been charming the heck out of us. So we'll see how it goes. It's the uh, medicine I'm on. Uh, it's, it's working, Jack. It's working. Well, well, she is also a law professor at Catholic University's Columbus Law School, specializing in civil rights and civil procedure. Uh, Suzette, we get to talk about this not at home, but here in the Situation Room. Right. Thanks, Thanks for, for having being here. Thanks for inviting me, Don. Uh, now, I know that all you've been watching these hearings. Um, clearly, a lot of people, particularly on the right and the left, are interested in the outcome of all of this because they think the court is going to change. Why should everyday Americans care about how this court and it, the makeup of the court? Great question. Um, you know, it, it's a, there's a funny study that has come out, actually, that says that uh, most Americans can identify two dwarves um, as part of the Snow White Seven Dwarves, <laughs> but they can't identify two justices on the United States Supreme Court. So clearly there's this disconnect um, for most Americans. And it matters who is on the Supreme Court, and it matters the types of cases that the Supreme Court decides. And to everyday Americans, they're dealing with issues that we care about. So, for example, if you think about immigration, uh, the court has recently decided to look at a case this fall dealing with a uh, immigration law coming out of Arizona. And it's not, the, it's not the controversial one that everybody's thinking about. Right, different one, different one. But it turns out that this law um, allows, has employers punished if they um, decide to hire illegal immigrants. And what the court is going to be doing is figuring out, does that state law, um, is it preempted by federal law? Um, which is a huge question because it's going to impact uh, thousands of immigrants in Arizona, um, workers, and really all all of the border states and all over the country are going to be looking at that as well as employers and then gun rights right, it's the same thing um, the court decided last week well Monday um, that there's an individual right to bear arms under the Second sure. amendment it applies not only to the federal government but to the states as well but what the court didn't tell us is what gun regulations are going to be allowed or going to be constitutional so again you have people all over the country that really care about those sorts of details and watching the hearings what makes this one different than some of the others that you've followed uh, well, funny enough, I mean, it certainly doesn't have all of the sparks and fireworks that we saw with uh, Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill hearings. Um, and we haven't seen that since, really. If you look at um, uh, uh, um, uh, Alito, if you look at Roberts, if you look at Sotomayor, we haven't had those fireworks for a while. And so this is really kind of the same cloth. Uh, what I think is interesting, though, about this hearing is the way Elena Kagan has used this as a teaching moment. Uh, she really has... Um, helped people understand what is it that Supreme Court justices actually do, right? How do they make decisions? Sure, they have to look at the Constitution, the language, but then they also have to consider things like history and tradition and other cases. And judges have to judge, right? They have to make determinations um, between some really difficult kinds of uh, questions and competing interests. And we've heard a lot about her ability to build consensus, that perhaps this would change, um, either move the court to the left or to the right. Uh, do we think that there's going to be any significant shift, real quick? Um, you know, on the surface, it could look that way because you're sort of trading one liberal for another. But I think if you step back and look big picture, uh, you know, Stevens is actually not quite liberal. You have the court shifting to the right, becoming more conservative, making him look liberal. So I think in many ways, people don't realize the court is probably more moderate than we imagine. And we heard Senator Dianne Feinstein give praise to Kagan. Obviously, this would be history making. You would have three women uh, all together on the Supreme Court at the same time. Um, what do you, how do you think that's going to play out? The transition is really interesting. Um, you know, once you get that critical mass and you have three women on the bench at the same time, it may open up the possibility of people feeling more comfortable and, in fact, you know, allowing some difference of opinion among the women on the court. So we may start seeing some differences, and I, I think that's a sign of, of, of change, of progress. Could we see you on the Supreme Court set? Oh, hey, okay, sure. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, if you if you want to fill in for me tomorrow here in the Situation Room, if you're available, we'll see. Do you think anybody will notice the difference? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> maybe, maybe Jack will notice. Maybe Jack will. Thanks again, Susan. Thanks, Don. Great to be here. Well, they went out.